Okay, in this video I just want to talk about graphing quadratic functions and just a simple example. Um, and here's my little checklist of usually things that I'll run through when I have to, you know, produce a, 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 rough, a rough sketch of a quadratic function. So um, I'm assuming that your quadratic is in standard form. So again, everything's basically multiplied out. We have ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, and again, to be a quadratic, we need the a, we need the x squared term in there. So that means a can equal zero. Recall that your parabola will open upwards if the a value is positive, and it will open downwards um, if the a value is negative. To find the vertex, which will either be you know, the highest point on the parabola or the lowest point on the parabola, we can use the formula negative b over 2a. Um, that will give us the x-coordinate of the vertex. Plug that into your function, you'll get the y-coordinate. To find x-intercepts, if there are any, um, I'll either factor. If it's not easy to factor, I'll just use the quadratic formula. And then to get the y-intercept, I simply plug 0 um, into the function. So let's do one here. Um, x squared minus 2x minus 8. So again, we don't see a coefficient in front of the x squared, but again, we it's understood that that's a 1. So since the coefficient is a 1 on the x squared term, well that's greater than 0, that means that our parabola will open upwards. Okay, so if it opens upwards, I know there's going to be kind of a, a lowest point on my parabola. The second thing um, that I'm going to do here, again, you don't have to do this in any particular order. Um, I'm going to find the vertex using the, the x-coordinate of the vertex using the negative b over 2a formula. So again, a is the number in front of x squared. So our a value in this case will be 1. The b value is whatever number's in front of x. And again, make sure you take into consideration the sign. So our b value in this case is negative 2. It turns out that the constant that's hanging out, you don't need, um, it has no effect on the vertex. Well, I shouldn't say it has no effect. It's going to have no effect on the x-coordinate of the vertex. It certainly will affect its y value. So let me be careful about what I say there. So, OK, so if we use the formula negative b over 2a, we'll just have negative, well, of negative 2. And then we take 2 times the a value, which is 1. So hey, we'll simply get 2 over 2, which says the x-coordinate of our vertex is going to equal 1. OK, so that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. And now all I have to do is plug that back into my function to get the y value. OK, so to get the y value, we just plug in 1. So f of 1 will be 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 8. So that's 1 minus 2 minus 8. And that, to me, looks like uh, the value negative 9. So it says, hey, when you plug 1 in, we get out the value negative 9. And this will be our vertex. OK, so that will be useful for us as well. Let me give myself a little more room here. Um, OK, so the third thing, at least in the order I had it written down, was to find x-intercepts. And remember to find x-intercepts, you basically um, replace the y value, or equivalently, the f of x. We set that equal to 0. So if I take my equation and I replace the f of x with 0, well, now I have to solve this equation. 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. So again, to solve these, um, you can either factor or use the quadratic formula. Um, I believe this one factors. So to get x squared, we'll need x and x. OK, so now I look for two numbers that multiply to negative 8 but add up to negative 2. Um, how about negative 4 and positive 2? I believe that will work. And if we set each piece equal to 0, we'll set x minus 4 equal to 0. That'll give us the x-intercept of 4. If we set the other part, the other factor, equal to 0, we'll get x equals negative 2. And OK, so it means in this case, um, our function has two x-intercepts. 
And if you really, if you think about the vertex, and if you think about the fact that it's opening upwards, intuitively I think it should have, I mean, two x-intercepts, if you just think about the geometry. So let's see, so I know my x-intercepts are going to be at 4 and negative 2. And the last thing is simply to get the y-intercept, and that's pretty easy to do. Um, so to get the y-intercept, we just let x equal 0. So if we plug in 0 for x, we'll get 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 8, and that to me looks like the value negative 8. And now all we have to do is, you know, make a, a little sketch of this stuff. You know, if you want, if you need a few more points, just you know, plug in a couple extra x values, and that'll give you some extra values on your graph. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to plot is the vertex. So it says I go over one unit and down nine units. So again, a very rough sketch here. I'm not counting off units or anything like that. Um, I know the y-intercept is negative eight. Okay, so that's what we actually found in the fourth step. So I know it goes through 0, comma, negative 8. I know the x-intercepts. I know it crosses the x-axis at 4, and also it crosses at negative 2, based on what we saw. So I'm going to put some points there as well. And now I pretty much just play connect the dots. I remind myself that it's opening upwards. So um, I'm going to try to make a, a kind of a curvy graph that goes through those points. Again, my artistry is not the best. But hey, there's a rough sketch of our parabola. Remember the x-coordinate of the vertex. Since it goes through the x-coordinate of 1, again, this is what's called the axis of symmetry. So we would say the axis of symmetry for this parabola is the line x equals 1. Um, and if you think about it, you know, again, that makes sense. So um, the x-coordinate of 4, that's 3 units away from the axis of symmetry. Also, negative 2 is 3 units away from the axis of symmetry. Um, so just a couple little observations there to make. And again, what I was saying a second ago is, I know the vertex has a negative y-coordinate, and since it was opening upwards, I knew that we had to find two x-intercepts. It just has to cross twice. So when I do my step on the x-intercepts, if I don't find any x-intercepts, well, then I know I've certainly done something wrong. So, all right, I hope this uh, simple example um, helps you out. If you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to post them.